Historically speaking, when it comes to ESA, or European Space Agency, it has this unusual tendency to launch missions that not a lot of people know about at first, but that with time tend to dramatically change our understanding of everything in the entire universe. For example, in 2009, without much fanfare, they launched the Planck Telescope, a telescope that operated for a few years and resulted in the most detailed observations of the cosmic microwave background ever, in the process making major discoveries we've discussed in videos a few years back. Then, in 2013, or roughly around 10 years ago, once again without much fanfare, they launched the Gaia telescope. The telescope responsible for measuring extremely accurate motions of a lot of different star-like objects, which essentially produced the most accurate map of the Milky Way galaxy we have so far, and pretty much most of the discoveries in the last few months that involved some kind of a star in the Milky Way galaxy would always have Gaia telescope data as part of the analysis. And actually some of the biggest discoveries in the last few years were all using this data. You can find some of the bigger discoveries in the description below. And now, in July of 2023, they launched another telescope with a very grandiose mission once again. The telescope known as Euclid, named after the Greek mathematician considered to be the father of geometry. And just like with previous missions, right now the expectation is that in approximately 5 to 6 years, when the data is collected, this telescope is going to dramatically change our entire understanding of what the entire universe might be like. Because this time, ESA is not just looking at the Milky Way galaxy, but instead is planning to observe approximately one-third of the entire night skies, focusing on 10 billion various objects, most of which are going to be galaxies, and providing detailed observations for approximately one billion of these objects. And so, yeah, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so let's talk about this particular mission, why it's kind of exciting, what it's planning to discover, and how it's going to be doing this for the next 5 to 6 years. But also talk about some of the most recent announcements. Because officially this mission has now begun, and the spacecraft is already functioning and has now released its first pictures. The pictures you'll see in a few seconds. But first, so what's the point of this particular mission? First of all, just like the James Webb Space Telescope, this is also located in the L2 Lagrange point, the invisible gravitational point where you can actually have an object orbiting for a pretty long time with only minimal requirements to maintain the orbit. But this is also where we find the Gaia telescope, which means that now there are three separate telescopes, Gaia, Euclid, and James Webb. This location is obviously really, really good if you want to have a permanent location to observe the rest of the universe away from the sun. And officially Euclid entered this area in late July of 2023. But unlike the other two telescopes, it does have slightly different instruments meant for a slightly different mission. Its main point is to take extremely accurate pictures of very, very distant galaxies. In this case, focusing on several specific parameters. The more important one is going to be redshift. This is mostly going to be done in optical light and infrared light in order to create a light spectrum of various galaxies, which can then be used to determine exact distances. With this first image sort of showing us what all of this data looks like. Each of these streaks is essentially a spectrum for individual galaxies really, really far away. And so by looking at each of these streaks, and by seeing the frequencies inside of them, it then becomes possible to break down galaxies into frequencies correlated with various elements, thus determining the exact distance, which is supposed to provide us with some of the most accurate redshift observations for pretty much most of the galaxies measured in the next 5 to 6 years. And intriguingly, this is what this image looks like, seen as just simple infrared snapshot. And here are the observations from the similar region, but this time in optical light. These images are not actually that useful for scientific purposes, but they show us that the instrument is definitely working and the telescope is ready to go. But it's not really going to be looking at individual galaxies one by one. Instead, it's going to be taking a kind of a wide-angle snapshot, making all measurements all at once. Because the main point in this case is not individual galaxies or their distances, but to try to understand what we usually refer to as the dark universe. In essence, the idea is behind dark matter and dark energy. And so by using observations in visible light, near infrared light, and by using redshift, the main point here is to create a three-dimensional map, kind of similar to what you see right here simulated in Space Engine, showing us billions of different galaxies, distances to them, but also trying to figure out 
how fast they're moving away from us and determining the overall distribution of the mysterious dark matter, with both of these being measured in slightly different ways. And one of the ways this is going to be done is by measuring the exact shapes of various galaxies going back to approximately 10 billion years in the past, and then comparing how these shapes changed over time and if there's any relationship between the shape, the speed of movement of a galaxy and the amount of dark matter that seems to be present there. In essence, trying to figure out if there is any kind of a connection between redshift, galactic shapes, the distribution of dark energy in the universe, and how all of this relates to the acceleration of the universe as we move away from planet Earth. And in this case, because many of these observations are going to be super super accurate, I think in about 5 to 6 years we might finally have quite a lot of answers of, first, if the universe is truly expanding and accelerating its expansion as predicted by many theories, as previously predicted and demonstrated by observations from supernova, or maybe there's something else entirely going on that we still don't understand. At the same time, the idea of dark matter as a potential particle is definitely going to be answered by these observations as well. Maybe dark matter is not a particle after all, with observations from Euclid potentially explaining exactly what's happening with the entire universe. And essentially by combining shapes of galaxies, redshift and gravitational landing effects, it becomes possible to create a kind of a statistical property determining the overall distribution of everything in the universe. Dark matter, dark energy and even galaxies themselves. But more importantly, just like the Gaia telescope that's able to create a three-dimensional picture of the Milky Way, we now might have a three-dimensional picture of a really large chunk of the entire universe. Ok, technically not the first such image, we've discussed previous discoveries and previous maps by a different survey in the video in the description below, but this here would be way more accurate and also way bigger because it's done by a space telescope as opposed to an observatory on planet Earth. And so even though that other observatory, the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, was previously able to create something like this, in essence showing us some of the first images of the distribution of everything in three dimensions, these are still very early observations. Euclid is most likely going to create something just as accurate and as transformational as Planck did for the cosmic microwave background. But it's also going to observe a lot of extremely distant galaxies, a lot of different quasars, and after approximately 5 years, is going to have about 10 billion different objects in its database, with the overall precision and overall accuracy expected to be at least 50 to maybe 100 times higher than anything else we currently have. And it's most likely going to end up with at least 30 million different galaxies with extremely accurate measurements of redshifts and of course the measurements of their shape and possibly a lot of other features. But these are obviously really big numbers. Trying to process all of this is of course going to take a large number of scientists working for many many years. Currently the Euclid Consortium contains 2500 people and here we're talking about at least 100 different labs in 18 countries, but this number is probably going to grow over the years. And so eventually this might become one of the biggest such projects trying to understand the entire universe. Definitely a super exciting project that we're going to be following along with for many years. Although chances are we're not going to be seeing the first maps for at least 4 to 5 years, possibly longer. In this case, it's definitely worth the wait. It's expected to actually not just contain 3 dimensions, but also a component of time, essentially showing us how everything evolved over time in the last 10 billion years. That by itself already sounds mind blowing. But not everything so far has gone as planned. Apparently during the initial observations, some of the earlier images revealed additional light coming from somewhere else. And turns out that it's probably sunlight coming through some kind of a tiny hole somewhere. And this light contamination would be enough to dramatically jeopardize the project. Luckily, the engineers behind the project realized that as long as they avoid certain orientations, no additional corrections or fixes are required. So it still seems to work, it's just we're not going to be able to see all of the possible locations in the entire universe. Some locations are going to be basically unavailable, at least for now. It's not entirely certain if this is going to have any long-term effect, but right now everything does look pretty good. Although intriguingly, something I really didn't expect to see in these images are these unusual streaks of light you see right there. That's not from the contamination, that's actually cosmic rays. Cosmic rays that were striking the instrument, creating these unusual streaks. And if you actually zoom in on this image, there are quite a lot of them coming from everywhere. But it's of course the galaxies that this instrument is going to be focusing on. 
so in the future all of these streaks and all of these extra stars are going to be mostly ignored. But chances are that for the next couple of years we're not really going to see much. The amount of data that needs to be transferred from this telescope, just like with the Gaia telescope, is going to be really huge. And then processing this data and turning it into scientific studies is going to take even longer. And so we might see some first studies maybe in 2-3 to three years, but possibly even longer than that. And so at least for now this is going to be one of those telescopes orbiting in the L2 point, collecting all of the data, but might possibly be forgotten for at least some time. But I'll make sure to remind you when something important does come out and when scientists discover something incredible nobody expected. For now though, definitely exciting stuff, something to look forward to and something to think about and something that might either prove our ideas and of course our theories about the universe or something that might discover explanations that nobody expected. We'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.